Good evening, and welcome to Trinity Reformed United Church of Christ on this Ash Wednesday service. I want to thank you for joining us here online and hope that you are truly fed by the worship of our God during this season of Lent. Also, I want to remind everyone tonight to be sure to have your bread or cracker available, as well as your wine and juice. And also this evening, I'm asking that you have either chapstick or oil available for an anointing in, uh, of, your fam of you and your family members uh, in, in place of the imposition of ashes. Now, please join us in our choral call to worship as found on your screens, Holy Ground. join me in the call to worship found on your screens. Blow the trumpets, summon all God's servants, call a solemn assembly for people of all ages. We respond to God's mercy and steadfast love. We are drawn by God's saving grace. Sound an alarm among all who have forgotten God. Turn back with fasting and repentance. We want to worship God with our whole being. We intend to be genuine in our praise and service. God's blessings penetrate our gloom and despair. God gathers us into the holy presence. Surely we will be washed and clean. God will teach us and we will learn. Our opening hymn is Praise to the Lord the Almighty on your screens. <laughs>
Please join me in the opening prayer found on your screens. Gracious and merciful God, we return to you with hearts that long for healing and minds that seek meaning for our days. Examine us and all our ways. Keep us from the self-delusions that overlook our sin and ignore our alienation. We tremble as we sense your presence. We are afraid to face your judgment, yet we are eager to be reconciled to you. We want to know you more fully and serve you more faithfully. Come among us in convincing ways on this holy day and in this season. Amen. God knows our false piety and religious pretense. All that we say and do is known to God. We can hide nothing from our Creator. Now is the time to bear our souls before God. So let us confess our sin by reciting the prayer of confession found on your screens. God of steadfast love, we tremble before you. We know our transgressions. We have rebelled since our earliest days shutting you out of our lives. You have doubted your presence, ignored your blessings, and resented your inclusiveness. It is hard to be truthful with others and within ourselves. Our worship has slipped into dull routine. Our sacrifices have been superficial. Blot out our iniquities, we pray, and wash us clean. Renew our spirits in the joy of your salvation. Amen. Let us now confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. The grace of God is abundantly present to change our lives. God lifts us above our transgression and cleanses us from our sin. In Christ, we are restored to the wholeness God intends for us. Our contrite hearts and receptive spirits welcome the deliverance we are offered. Open your mouths to declare God's praise. Open your lives to accept the transformation that comes with forgiveness. It is now time for our moments with the children. So kids, get around the screen, and I have some little things to explain to you tonight. Now, the history of ashes, that's what I want to tell, talk to you about tonight. Where did this all come from? Now, though the exact origin is not clear, the custom of marking the head with ashes on this day is said to have originated during the papacy of Gregory the Great in 590 to 604 CE. That's a long time ago. And in the Old Testament, ashes were found to have been used for two purposes. One as a sign for humility, being humble, and mortality for us, the fact that we will die someday. And as a sign of sorrow and repentance, meaning we feel sorry for our sins and we turn around to go the right way. Those purposes can be found in the Old Testament passage in Ezekiel, where a mark was placed on the foreheads of those who were to be spared from the punishment of sin. Now, tonight, my challenge for you is for you to have your parents use oil or chapstick in place of the ashes and place them on your forehead to show God that you are sorry for the mistakes that you've made against others, and that you will remember those mistakes that you make so that not so you don't repeat them again. And you do this in humility to God. You're opening yourself for God to examine you. So this is an opportunity for you tonight to truly 
be in touch with God. So, you think you can do that tonight? I bet you can. Let's pray. Holy God, help us remember the sins that we commit so that we might not do them again. And let us be thankful for the forgiveness and the love that you offer us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our epistle lesson for this evening is from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 20b through chapter 6, verse 10, beginning in verse 20b. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness and spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Here ends our first reading. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and 16 through 21. Here Jesus teaches about our sincere response to God in our almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. He counsels us to practice these privately and not as displays of our own righteousness, beginning in verse 1. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe.
Let us pray. Holy God, in whom our very life was set in motion, be with us as we consider our lives and what they have become. Help us to reflect on how well we have followed your ways and what we need to do, be, to do to be in true relationship with your most Holy Spirit. You give us life. You provide for our needs. And you walk with us as we journey through this experience. Show us what we have become and guide us to that which we must do to be reconciled to your word as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the scripture so eloquently uh, portrays Jesus' day, we see that the Pharisees prayed on the street corners and in the synagogues for everyone to see. In fact, there's another scripture where the Pharisees are praying on the street corner and he prays to God and says, thank you, God, that I'm not like those sinners over there. All full of themselves. As Jesus puts it, hypocrites. And of course, Pharisees, you know, made sure that everyone saw just how much money they gave to the temple. Even though, in reality, they were cheating others. They were selling temple script, meaning that when you gave your offerings in the temple, you, you brought your Roman money, and you had to exchange it. So the Pharisees set the exchange rate. They might require five or six Roman coins for one Roman or for one temple coin for you to give your offering. They literally cheated the people they were supposed to be taking care of and the law that they were supposed to be observing. Pharisees also very fasted. Oh, they fasted religiously, but they made sure that everyone saw them. And again, Jesus calls them hypocrites. Hypocrites. Pharisees often were also very wealthy, usually, and they flaunted it as well because they wanted to show that they were better than others, not only in wealth and not only in fasting and prayer, but in all things, their piety. They were righteous. They were following the law, and they made sure everybody saw them. You see, Jesus sets them as the example of us what not to do. Unfortunately, it also describes many Christians today. For example, those, those, there are those who say that to follow Jesus, they, they do follow Jesus, but they don't want to throw, they don't also want uh, to throw immigrants out of the country. Uh, or the, I'm sorry. There are, they, there are those who say they follow Jesus, but they also want to throw immigrants out of our country, even though Jesus said, love your neighbor. And the Old Testament said, treat the resident alien as citizens. Then there are those who fight for the lives of the unborn children. But at the same time, they lock up kids in cages and refuse to provide welfare benefits to children of the poor. And this we know was against what Jesus taught. As he said, we are to take care of the widow and the orphan. That being the most vulnerable of the society. And we see some Christians mistreat and discriminate against people of color. And yet Jesus uses the Samaritan, someone who the Israelites disliked due to their race, as the example of the good neighbor. And then there are those who, like the Pharisees, want everyone to know just how righteous and law-abiding they are while in secret so that they are doing the very things they say they are against. These Christians are Pharisees of our day. But thankfully, Lent, this time of year in the church calendar, is the reflective self-examining time of our year. We are to humble ourselves before God, open ourselves, expose our innermost fears, our innermost anxieties and doubts, even our questions and our biases and prejudices. 
We are to open and lay them bare in front of God so that we can examine ourselves so that we aren't false piety and false righteousness like the Pharisees. You see, when we open ourselves to self-examination, we can't hide any of ourselves from God who already knows who and what we are. The one who needs convincing is us, not God. You see, Lent helps us take that time to be in prayer or meditation that one time of the year that we make a serious sacrifice of our time, our time to be with God in prayer and meditation. You see, 40 days of Lent, not counting Sundays, are the time we are to make this sacrifice. It's a reminder every single year for us to look inside, to see ourselves, bear ourselves. But the question is, can we really make that sacrifice? You see, prayer is taking time daily to talk and communicate with the creator of life. I mean, how many relationships do you have where you don't talk to the person that you're in relationship with? Scripture says that we are to read and meditate. We are to reflect and respond to God's call. The call that God gave us. The mission and the purpose in life that God gave us. We are to reflect on those things. Read Scripture and and be able to get that confirmation of our call. We are also to repent during Lent. It's a time of turning around, turning to a new way of life, a new life in Christ, where we truly follow Christ's teachings and we turn away from the ways of the world that tell us that we have to have power, we have to have wealth, we have to have status, when in fact, we need to have love. Love that new life that Christ offers. And we are look to look at almsgiving. Almsgiving, making that financial sacrifice to God, often through charity. We might be a particular charity in town. It may, in fact, be your church, because the church actually has very, like here at Trinity, we have numerous benevolences that we support here in town. We're also to seriously look at atonement, being reconciled to God, admitting our mistakes, appreciating the forgiveness that God grants us freely, freely. We need to be in communication with God and state and confess our sin, acknowledging them acknowledging our mistakes. And then there's, of course, the self-denial. The self-denial or fasting. And this is denying yourself of something that is truly important to you. Many people uh, give up meat on Fridays. Other people give up alcohol. They give up chocolate. They give up their time to a charity, to work at the food bank, to do something for the church to give up their time. Matter of fact, this Saturday, many people are going to be giving up their time to come to the church and clean this entire church top to bottom. They're sacrificing their time on the weekend to help the church. This 40-day exercise, excluding Sundays, is a cleansing ritual that we do each year, putting away all the allures and distractions and interest of this world. It's a time when we say safety and health of others is more important than our rights not to wear a mask. Love your neighbor means you do things to take care of other people. By wearing a mask and socially distancing and washing your hands frequently and getting your vaccine and doing those things so that you don't infect someone else is truly loving your neighbor. 
It is repentance. It's turning away from the whole idea that we have rights that we must stand up for. When Jesus could care less about our rights, the Pharisees cared about their rights, and especially in the marketplace, to be able to sit at the best seat in the house for the dinners that they went to. Oh, they cared about their rights, but Jesus cared about loving your neighbor, taking care of the widow, the orphan, caring for those who truly need it. This is a time when we did disregard all those things that we're told by, by society that really matter. Rights, power, status, wealth. And instead, really concentrating on God and your relationship with God. It prepares us for a new life through Easter's resurrection. Monday, Thursday, we commune with Christ at the Last Supper. Good Friday, our old ways die on the cross with Christ. And on Easter Sunday, we are born anew in Christ, ready to be a disciple, to be a disciple, and put on the armor of righteousness. What a wonderful opportunity we have. But will we take it? Will we set aside time to be in communion with God? Will we expose ourselves to real reflective examination? Better yet, will we do anything about the biases that we realize in ourselves? Will we do anything about the questions, the doubts, the anxieties, or fears that we experience? Will we change our ways? Will we be made anew, away from our society's, society's demands? Those are the questions we must ask. We, must, we have much to consider in these next 40 days. And my blessing for you is that you find your spiritual self, that that part of you that holds the Holy Spirit. And my hope is that you will allow the Spirit to guide you and to empower you to do God's will and follow Christ's teachings from this very moment until you meet God in your heavenly home. Because remember, you are dust, and to dust you will return. Amen. Let us continue our service with our hymn of response. More love to thee, O Christ, on your screen.
Let us pray. All-seeing God, you know our motives as well as our deeds. Nothing we think or do is a secret from you. May our piety grow out of love for you, our generosity out of a genuine care for others, our prayers out of a deep thankfulness for the treasures you entrust to our stewardship. Guide our time of fasting and self-examination toward the deepening of our faith and the effectiveness of our service in Christ's name. As today we ask mindfully that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those on our prayer list, and especially we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with such love. Now in a moment of silence, we ask that you hear those prayers that we have for our loved ones and our friends and our country and our church. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our minds and in our hearts and in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When you give, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give, not to be praised or thanked, but to praise God and proclaim the good news of salvation. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformeducc.org and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelope as best you are able. Please join me in the prayer of dedication found on your screens. In our relationship with you, loving God, we have everything we need. We are rich and have much to share. With joy and gladness, we dedicate our offerings to the work you call us to do. Lead us by this investment of our money to greater investment of our time and skills in the ways of heaven. May our love be genuine our speech truthful, and our leadership patient and kind as we labor to bring others to your holy mountain. Amen. At this time, I'd remind you all to have your bread or cracker, your juice and wine, and of course your chapstick and oil ready for this time of celebration. Tonight we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper as well as the imposition of ashes. And uh, the Lord's Supper here at Trinity is not restricted to only our members. Anyone can join us at this table who seeks to follow Christ. Anyone who is seeking Christ in their life. Children are also allowed at this table as well with the permission of their parents. So, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. 
therefore, this table is for all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. In the, the presence, presence of, of Christ, all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving meal. God be with you. And also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to God. God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It, it is, is right to give God, God thanks and, and praise. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We celebrate Christ's life, we remember Christ's death, and we rejoice in Christ's resurrection. We take courage in the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst and with all the prophets, martyrs, and saints and all the company of heaven, we glorify your holy name. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus then took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured for many for the forgiveness of sins. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in one another. In, in the strength, strength Christ, Christ gives us, we, we offer, offer ourselves to you, to you eternal, eternal God, God, and, and give thanks that, that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Come, for all things are ready. Please take your bread or wafer and hold it up. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Now take your cup or juice, a cup of juice or wine, and lift it up. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. At this time, I will place ashes on Kathy, and she will do the same to me with a Q-tip, and I will ask that you use either chapstick or oil to anoint yourself and your family at home, saying, and I'll say this for everyone at this time, blessed are those who receive this oil or these ashes in repentance of faith. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. And then as you put the oil or the ashes on, say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world with courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of your most Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the blessing and commission found on your screens. Go forth in the steadfast love of God. Spread the good news of salvation from sin. Our spirits have been fed in this time of worship. Our lives have been cleansed by a merciful God. Share with others the joy of living in God's grace. Let your fasting and sacrifice be a blessing to others. Our lips will declare God's praise. Our secret alms will extend God's love. We are assured of God's continuing presence. The one who knows our hearts accepts us as we are. We will seek to grow in truth and purity. We will use well the time and resources God gives. Amen. Now hear this pastoral benediction. May we truly reflect on our spiritual journey and be honest with ourselves on how well we have done in honoring God's commands. May we also take this time to prepare ourselves for Christ's crucifixion, death, and resurrection by sacrificing ourselves in the service of God and others. Amen. Let us conclude our service tonight with standing in the need of prayer found on your screens. Thank you.